and we'll start with a talk by um, Andre Masella, um, who will uh, speak about enhancements to MISO and open source community driven LUNS. Hi, so MISO has been presented here uh, several times, I believe, uh, by the original author, Robert Davey, who has a lot of hair. I am clearly not him. Um, so MISO is a LIMS that's meant to track uh, DNA samples through library preparation and pooling for sequencing and to collect the metadata for SRA submission and monitor the sequencers and provide, uh, like collect the output and provide notifications based on that and uh, handles a bunch of different platforms, including ones that I hope no one is using anymore, but you might have a solid sequencer around. Um, and to do some uh, inter-team communication reporting and um, try to be something that's fairly robust. Um, so we, uh, as OACR, had a LIMS that we've been using for several years now, uh, GeoSpeeds, a gene sifter, and it was getting fairly expensive in terms of licensing costs for us, and our feature requests weren't being fulfilled by the manufacturer, so we were getting increasingly annoyed with not having it perform to our needs. And um, the group formerly known as TGAC, uh, now called Earlham, uh, had developed uh, limbs in-house because, again, they were unhappy with the limbs that they were um, uh, using previously. And it had reached a point of reasonable stability for them where they were mostly doing small feature development and maintenance work. And one of our managers went over there um, for uh, other collaboration reasons and was very interested in their limbs. So we decided to um, take a look at bringing it to our institute. So we have mostly the same setup in that we're both doing a, a general high throughput sequencing lab that um, collects samples, uh, does some processing to them and sequences them and then passes that off to analysis pipeline. In our case, we're using Sequare for analysis. In the case of uh, Erlen, they use Analysis Server, which is part of MISO, to do some basic analysis uh, kickoff. It's mostly um, like BCL to FASTQ kind of level um, analysis at that point. So we looked at what it would take for us to collaborate and decided whether we really wanted to do this um, and how that was going to work as a, a team. So. The major problem when you take something that is ostensibly open source but really has only been used by one group, um, it, it doesn't always just sort of install and work magically in your new environment. Um, so we have similar but distinct needs in the way that we handle things. Um, Erlham handles mostly direct DNA um, given to them by their uh, customers. We tend to handle not only DNA but also uh, tissues. We get, we get bits of people in tubes and then have to do the DNA extraction. Um, and uh, a lot of microdissection is another area that we specialize in. Uh, we have a similar set of, of instruments. We mostly track um, uh, uh, Illumina sequencing through our limbs. We do have some pack bio, but we don't use it in the same way that Earlham does. So they're more pack bio focused than we are. We also have this concern of okay, we're going to turn off GeoSpeza, and what happens to all the data that's in it? Because almost all of the projects in there have been long-term ones that need continued access to them, and it serves as our freezer management, so we can't just say, well, you know, it's in the freezer. Good luck with that. Um, so we didn't want to fork off MISO and just do our own thing. We wanted to come up with a development plan that allowed us to integrate our features back into Earlham's um, mainline, and some of the features that we're developing are useful to them and they're very happy to have. Others are more relevant. And so we need a way to make sure that we're not um, disrupting their lab uh, environment by adding features that they're not going to use. So as a group, we currently have one developer at Earlham and four developers at OICR. Um, that will ramp down once we actually sunset GeoSpeza. Um, we've put all of our work visibly on GitHub. Um, we insist on two code or co two developers to review every piece of code that gets submitted. Every piece. Um, you change a README, it gets reviewed. Uh, about the only thing that doesn't get reviewed is when we tag a release. That's that's free. You can change the version number for free. 
Um, and we've tried to get all of the site-specific stuff integrated, or sorry, all of the uh, functionality integrated into the main line. We do have a site-specific repository, but that basically holds a tiny amount of configuration of information about which features we want on and, and not, um, and we just uh, merge in the latest uh, mainline into our configuration. So for MISO as a LIMS, uh, what's new since we last presented it here, um, these are features mostly driven by what OICR needed uh, to replace GeoSpeza. So our biggest one has been a tissue processing workflow. Because we're taking in uh, tissues that we want to get to DNA extract, we need to follow what our lab is doing in terms of um, the, the tissue processing. We do the um, uh, preparation, slide preparation, uh, laser captured microdissection. Um, we handle a lot of uh, formaldehyde fixed, sorry, formalin fixed paraffin embedded um, biopsy samples, which require uh, separate processing. So we've built a customizable workflow that allows you to say, okay, I started with a person, they have provided these tissue samples, we have taken these tissue samples, put them through these procedures, done these kinds of um, uh, chemical steps as well as physical steps and enrichment processes. Um, for instance, if we do uh, like a array-based um, hybridization to, to capture a subset of the DNA, we want to know uh, what was going on there so we can track all of that when it gets time to process it um, computationally. The GeoSpeza way of doing this was to, in a lot of cases when, when putting in these workflows, was you say how many samples you want, you download this spreadsheet, you fill in the spreadsheet, and then you upload it back to GeoSpeza. You do not want to look at any of the desktops in the lab. They're just Excel files off the edge of the, numbered Excel files off the edge of the screen. And it's like, gee, no thanks. Um, so getting, getting them to not use Excel was one of our goals, which we, we're trying, we're really trying. And we've done that by um, great, creating this, or using this great um, JavaScript framework called Hands-On Table that allows you to put Excel-like tables into a web interface and you can copy and paste from Excel reasonably well. And they've been very happy with that so far. So maybe Excel will get to go away in our lab environment. We also needed to track what was in the freezer. Um, so we created a storage box interface. Um, Erlham has a feature in MISO called plates, which are meant for tracking liquid handling robot plates, uh, like 96 well plates um, with samples in them. Uh, the fundamental difference between what we're doing in the, the freezer and the, um, the plates is the plates is a one-step thing. If you create this plate, your liquid handling robot deals with it, and then that's it. It's that way forever. The storage boxes that we're talking about are generally um, holding barcoded tubes and you can shuffle things around and a lot of cases it's part of the workflow of okay go get box whatever take all the samples in it do procedure x on them and then put them into box y and someone else will pick them up and take them on to the next step when those are manual steps so uh, and then a lot of those tubes will end up as a and now it is in freezer five as a final resting place so we wanted to do that. We also have uh, bulk scanners for our boxes in the lab. And once again, it was a lovely Excel-based process where they would use the software, download the barcodes, manipulate that in Excel, paste that into a text box in GeoSpeza, and then have that. Yeah, pe people's eyes are getting wide. I like that. When I saw it the first time, I'm like, oh, OK. Um, Turns out you can, you can talk to the scanner programmatically. So one of the features of MISO boxes is you drop the thing on the scanner, you hit the scan button in MISO, and it says, here are all the tubes I could find that weren't completely covered in frost. Um, we also wanted to do order management. Um, we have sort of separate sub-teams, and the way that our lab work was uh, library preparation would happen. They would prepare a library for sequencing, and then someone else would handle what gets loaded on sequencers. So there was a feature in GeoSpeza that we were kind of abusing to do a order management of these are all the things that need to be done. Um, so we need five lanes of this on V4 chemistry at, you know, Herdan Reed, 
this many base pairs, that kind of thing. Um, and it was a very manual process, and it was hard to check what was actually done. So to me, so we've added a feature to handle that. So uh, in this top screenshot, whenever you have a library preparation that you've made, you can say, okay, I want you to do five lanes of this and add that to an order. And then you can go to the outstanding orders page and says, okay, here are all the things that haven't completely been sequenced. Um, decide what you want to sequence. There are, you know, it, it knows the state of what comes off the sequencer. So it can say, oh, like you, you ran four lanes, but two of them failed. So you still have uh, two to go. Uh, we also have better input validation, so fewer stack traces, that always makes users happy, and um, change logs so that as users edit, uh, we have, I don't want to say an audit log because that's a little too severe, but at least you can see what uh, changes have been going on and which of your coworkers to say, this passed? You changed this to passed? Why? So in terms of software development procedures, uh, we've really changed a lot and changed the way that MISO was operating internally. So we've really moved to a very good shared development model. Um, everything gets code reviewed. Uh, we make decisions as to who gets to do that code review based on the feature. If it's something that both institutes care about, then we insist that uh, someone from both institutes is represented on that code review for things that are more either trivial or um, specific to one institute, then we, we say two reviewers, but it doesn't really matter who. Um, we've also made it more plug and play and tried to externalize a lot of the configuration from the code, the old, hey, this was a hard-coded path, did you know that? Oops. Um, for OACR, our plan is um, we want to um, move to a weekly development model. So we've been doing weekly releases that are roll forward or roll back only. Um, we don't hotfix anymore, so every week we do a release. The release is either good enough to make it to next week or bad enough that we go back to previous week. Um, and if you have this one little thing that doesn't work, like live with it or go back. No in between. So um, that's something that we've done in the code base in a way that if you want to follow along, you can and, and survive those weekly releases. Um, so currently we're planning to um, uh, expand the tissue processing workflow for our own needs at OICR, but Erlem is also interested, so that will be generalized with time. Um, our, our workflow tends to be very variable because we, um, we handle a lot of special case uh, that our customers require. Um, and we want to improve the UI. Uh, we've been using that Excel-like hands-on tables for all the new development but there's a bunch of existing places that are still using upload, download spreadsheets, and we intend to replace all of those, and we want to get better reporting. So the source is available on GitHub. There's a Docker container that, um, if you just want to try it up, it's pretty easy to fire up. It's also on my laptop, so if you want to come and get a live demo, I don't do live demos at presentations anymore, never again. <laughs> but if you want the slightly slightly more low risk demo, you can come see me, I'm happy to show it. We also have a Slack channel where you're welcome to come and talk to us. Um, we would love for more institutes to, to join on. Um, developing limbs seems to be one of those cottage industries, but uh, hopefully we can move to something that's more community focused. Uh, so this is the current team um, split between OICR and Earlm. Uh, Rob Davies is the one who'd presented before and was the original developer. And uh, finally, I need to thank the people who give us and them money, because money. <laughs> and I'll take any questions. <laughs>